everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you want to receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Welcome back to another um, another live class. I realized I didn't check my audio um, before I went live, so uh, that's probably why you couldn't hear me. But it should be fixed. Um, hi, welcome everybody. I am so glad you're here. We have a little bit uh, a little bit over twenty minutes before we start. This is our art and chat where we just get a chat. Um, all things art related, family, whatever, um, weather. I'm excited you're here. Um, hello, Deb from Australia. What's the weather like in Australia right now? Because in San Diego, it is getting warm. And uh, currently we only have air conditioning in our room. So the kids have been like sleeping with us on the floor. Um, and tell you what, they have been loving that. Um, but <laughs> sleepovers every night. Um, but yeah, that's been fun. But yeah, it's, it's, getting, it's getting a little warm. Uh, here in San Diego. Um, as usual, I do have a uh, traceable in case anyone is interested in that. I give it to patrons who support me uh, at any tier level. So if you're at any tier on Patreon, you have access to all of my traceables for literally every live class and Patreon class that I've ever done. Um, so I can give that to you here. So I just linked that and that is, um, this is the one that we're using today. Um, so if you want to use that, great. If not, then you can just go at it with the pencil. You can freehand it. That's totally fine too. Um, but for those who aren't comfortable doing that, um, I gift it to all my patrons who support me. Um, other things that I'm excited about, I finally got my printer figured out. Uh, last time we talked, I know uh, I had mentioned that my printer was printing off, like, I wanted to do this for my teal, so my teal and cobalt uh, tiers get a free postcard from me. It's like a, a just a free um, postcard as like a, an extra thank you every month. And it's usually one that I painted that month, so it's like ever rotating. And I printed out this one, and I'm just like, this is not what my painting looks like. And I was really sad. And I think there's just something wrong with the, like the blue, like the blues and stuff like that, in my printer right now. And I I didn't get it figured out for this one, but I ended up printing, um, ended up painting, or printing out this one, which I still think is beautiful. Um, it's the teacup we did for my patrons uh, last month. Um, but it came out really pretty. So I have those patrons. Those are going out probably tomorrow, I'm guessing, um, if I can make it to the post office. Um, how do I get to your Patreon to give you a tip? Um, you can, you can either give me a tip on like Venmo or, um, or Patreon or, or, um, PayPal. Those, uh, I actually have that linked in the description. Um, if you want to do it via Patreon, um, just make sure that if you only want to give a certain amount, make sure that you, um, 
if you don't want to continue to be a patron, uh, just remember to cancel. Um, but if you follow the Patreon link, actually, I can probably, for some reason, my computer uh, keyboard is not working right now, so I have to like manually, um, <laughs> manually put everything in. But let me, I can copy paste this link. Um, okay, this is like just the general link to my Patreon, and not any specific, um, any specific link to any post or anything like that um here's that so you can either join at, if you want to give like a tip um you can join at any tier or you can give like your own whatever uh whatever uh let's say it's not a tier amount like twenty dollars whatever um uh, just note that you won't be put in a tier if you do that um i believe you can always join a tier after that but i don't think you initially get put in a tier but if you do tip through patreon then you get access to literally all my content so that's kind of fun um so if you do give a tip i would have i would recommend doing it via patreon because then you get access to all, all the stuff um at least for the remainder of this month um other fun things that have happened i feel like so much has happened in the last like two weeks um Oh, okay, so it's June, and we officially started our, um, our, we started our series of animals and flowers, and this was the first one that we did in Patreon. So two are going to be done in Patreon, and the other two are going to be done here free on YouTube. Um, so this is the first one absolutely love it isn't he a cutie <laughs> um i don't know why i think these guys are so cute um but i can't wait i'm not i'm not sure if i'm gonna sell these because we're doing a series of four and i'm going to end up doing them all landscape i think the owl i advertised as a uh, a portrait class like upright but the other three are um our landscape so I either need to do one more portrait so then they can kind of be like so i can all like like hang them together i can't decide maybe my patrons can help me figure that out um but if they're if i have two portraits and two landscapes then i can like put them like that kind of like stylized or if they're all landscape then i can just have like a box that they all kind of like go together so i'm not totally sure if i'm gonna sell these um i might like them too much um but yes he's very cute i love him um yeah um i'm trying to think of other things um that have happened this week there's some other news that i can't share quite yet um i'll probably let my patrons know first um, and I'll let you guys all know in the next one, but I do have some big news coming up, um, later this month that I'm excited to share. Um, but how are you all? I'm excited that you're all here. Um, and I'm excited to paint. I'm always excited to paint, but it's like my oasis. Oh, I should get my paints out. That's probably important. Paints. Paints are good. Let's see. What did I tell you I was going to be painting with? Get all my paints now. Um, let's see. Okay. Okay, uh, let's see. Colors we'll be using in this class. You have your white, your black. Uh, where's my black? There's black. I'm guessing raw umber. Yep. Red, yellow, green. Let's see. Red, yellow. Which will make any sort of orange. Um, you probably could. Let's see. 
probably have an orange out if you needed to, but your red and your yellow will probably be fine. Um, green. I'm going to use the bright green and then tone it down with some brown and black. I think that'll work fine because it is a kind of a brighter green. And then I have down purple or lavender. Now I have a lavender. That'll be perfect for this. But I want to know your thoughts and if people have lavender because most people just have like purple. Like I have a violet which is a very dark purple. And I almost want to use that so that I can show you how to create a lavender color from that. But I'm really tempted to use the lavender that I have. If I can find it. Haha. -ha. Let's see. It says purple. It's lavender. Let's be real. Let me see. Let me pull up the... And that's a bit pinker, but I can cool it down. Which in that case, you might need blue. Or I can get out my other purple. Um, to change the color as well. Ah, I'll play with it. I'll have fun. I might get out my pink too. But we'll see. Apologies for the bag crinkling. Okay. Alright, so I have my picture out. If you need, um, if you need the reference photo, um, obviously if you're on Patreon, you can find it there where the traceable is. It's the same link. Um, but if you are not on Patreon and you want a reference photo, follow, uh, go to my, my Facebook. Um, it's, I posted it yesterday, I think, maybe? Maybe I didn't. Um, I, th I thought I posted it yesterday. I could have not. Um, but there's also, if you're already on YouTube, if you go to my main page and you click the community tab, I should have posted, um it in there um, I believe I did I think I posted it this morning um, so that if you do need a reference you can look there okay. Oops. I don't want that full screen what am I doing Alright, so I currently have two different purples. As you can see, this literally looks black, and when you open it up and put it on your palette, it still looks black. Um, I often, <laughs> when I'm pulling out my colors, I'm like, this is not the right color. It's violet, not black. Um, but we'll have fun with the colors, and use what you have. Obviously, you don't have to use exactly what I have, um, considering I don't even know exactly what I'm going to use. I'm just going to have fun, use what I have play with the colors, and um, go from there. There's no, there's no rules. There's no rules when it comes to art. Or you could even do pink flowers for all I care. Um, I did specifically um, choose all of these images and like manipulate them um, to make sure that they're all different color flowers. Um, so, or maybe I didn't. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think the chipmunk is more, I think it's blue colors, now that I'm thinking about it. Those are blue flowers. This one's a purple flower. Uh, we just did yellow flowers. And then the owl is orange flower. So if you wanted to do a pink one with this one, you could do pink. But obviously that's up to you. And, and if you're not doing them in a set, then obviously it doesn't doesn't really matter and you can do whatever you want. I'm trying to figure out how I want to do the bathroom, the bathroom, the background. Um, because I didn't put on here, um, I didn't put on here sponge, but if you have a sponge, this would be a fantastic, 
uh, one to use a sponge for the background because it's very, very blurry. There's just like glimpses of color in there. Um, and the last time I did a blurry butterfly background, that one, <laughs> sorry, it's like backwards for me. Um, this one right here, um, I wasn't, I love the butterfly, but I'm not a huge fan. I, I like the background too, and I think it gives it like an environment. Um, but I found it really hard to replicate for my students. So I think doing a simpler background would be helpful. Um, either like all one color, like one color, like a gray color, um, or do mainly gray and then add bits of um, purple as I'm going. So I probably will do that and you can do it with um, you can do it with just brushes, but it's easier to get kind of that frizzled out, uh, blurry, um, blurry technique with a sponge. So if you have an art sponge, maybe go grab that, um, cause it'll be, it'll be helpful or use bokeh for the background because who doesn't love using bokeh, <laughs> which is, uh, used with these, which I think we did in our last, our last one, the sunflower. Yes, we did. I love bokeh. That's so fun. And these things make it look, make it so easy. Is anyone planning on doing all four of them and like hanging them up together? I know I'm planning on doing that, but that's because obviously I'm painting them all <laughs> this month. Not everyone. Um, We'll have the time to paint them all, but. There's 14 of you here. Why are you all quiet? Are you getting ready? Oh, I see. Hello, welcome back. Um, that got it as in got the traceable? Most of the time I like to paint without a traceable because I like to be able to teach, but sometimes it's nice to have just a little bit of an outline um, so I don't have to think about, I don't have to think about sizing or placement or anything like that. Sometimes it's just easier to have that kind of already there. Um, I know for, for beginners it's really helpful and even when I first started like it's really helpful to have some sort of a outline or something on the canvas you're not starting with a blank canvas because sometimes that can be really intimidating. Um, it doesn't have to be but for some it is. Um, but yeah. Yay okay cool I'm glad you figured it out and you got in. And I appreciate it. I appreciate the the tip and it's helpful um, um, yes it is helpful yeah and even if you're not gonna like trace it even just being able to look at like where all the lines are and everything like even uh, like the circles and all of these lines sometimes it's helpful to look at like a, a black and white drawing versus the the actual picture um i know for me it's helpful so it's got to be helpful for other people too but um i don't know it's just people work differently so 
So. This is like, I'm like playing with this in my hand. It's like a stress ball. It's like therapeutic. <laughs> to like squish it. If you're wondering what I'm doing with my hands. And it like fits perfectly like in my palm too. I'm weird apparently. So there's that. All right, three more minutes. Um, we're going to let everyone get their notifications that I went live and they are on their way. And Melissa, just so you know, um, you'll have access for the whole month. Um, if you don't cancel, then it'll you'll be billed on the first. Um, but even if you cancel right now, you'll still have access throughout the month. Um, but if you want access to the classes, um, that's available to one tier up, which is the $7 tier. So you'll have access to the other two classes in the in this month's series so just in case um just in case you can't find the all, all the tutorials um that's one one tier above yours i'm excited to paint i can't decide which purple what kind of purple do you guys have let me know I have this lavender which says it's just purple but it's it's lighter and um, which I feel like will be closer to what we're going for um, or I have this really dark really 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 dark purple which you like can't tell what color it is until you add white to it um, so let me know what kind of purple you guys are using and maybe I can adjust my class to that Any last questions before we start class? Hello. Hello, hello. We're gonna get started in just a minute. I always love doing butterflies, so. I'm excited for this one. All right, we are going to get started and I will see you on the other side. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you want to receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started.
Hello, hello. How weird. It was working on the other one and it wasn't working here. Um, hello, welcome into another live class. I'm so excited you guys are here. Hopefully uh, that's all working now. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments below uh, where you're from, who you're painting with. Um, if you are painting with anyone, I would love to know. And yeah, I'm excited to paint. So let's go over some supplies. We'll go over supplies, um, some announcements, and then we will get to painting. So today, obviously, we are working with acrylics as usual. I'm using a Fredericks canvas. They sent me a box, um, a few boxes, and I'm still working through them. So I was really thankful for them. Um, so this is a 11 by 14 stretched canvas. I am using, um, most of these are Hippie Crafter acrylics. They sent me um, these a while back. Um, some of them I've refilled because I really like the bottles um, for my small little workspace. But um, if they're not Hippie Crafter acrylics, then I'm using full body uh, either Master Touch or uh, Liquitex. So um, there's that. I have my water, my paper towel, my palette, um, and then I also have my palette knife for mixing large quantities of paint. I find that super helpful um, so that I don't get all of that paint mixed in with my, um, mixed into my brushes. Okay. Um, I have an array of brushes. I'll go over specific brushes that I use when I'm using them and by no means do they have to be exactly the same. Use what you have. Um, the colors specifically that I have out, um, are my white, my black, I have my red, my yellow, and my raw umber. And then I have my bright green. I chose to do this bright green because the green stem is fairly, fairly bright. Uh, so I decided to do with a base bright and then I can always dull it down with some yellow and brown or black if needed. And then I have purple. Now I have two different purples out. Um, I have a, a Hippie Crafter Violet, which is very, very dark. Um, it's very dark. Like I get it mixed up with black all the time until you put white into it. And then it's like, oh, <laughs> this is purple. Um, and then I have uh, a Master Touch Purple, which is more of a lavender. This is probably more of the color that I would use. It's a little bit more on the pinker side. So I think I plan to use my violet. It's a little bit more on the bluer side and then I'll add um, white to it. And then I can always add my lavender color for a hint of that pinkish. Um, or you can always just have pink on hand. Um, so those are the colors that I have out um, and that I plan to use. The purples, I may or may not use all those and I may not use the pink. It just kind of depends. Um, there are some orange spots in here, um, so if you have an orange, you can have an orange out, um, but otherwise I'm just going to be using my red and yellow um, so that I can kind of control how red or orange it gets. And then something that is, I don't think I put it on the supply list, so if you don't have it, that's okay, um, but I have a sponge. So if you don't have an art sponge, they're super cheap on Amazon, um, they're in my, my Amazon store, you can buy it they come in like packs of two or four whatever um but they're super helpful um especially for backgrounds like this if you do not have one of these you can also use this uh, or you can also just use a brush for a kind of the blurry background uh depending on how you want to do it that might be uh not your preferred method so use the materials you have i'll show both ways and then I'll use whichever one that I like better. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I think that's all of the supplies. Let me go over a few announcements uh, before we get started. This is one of four of, uh, technically it's two of four because we already did the first one, um, of our series this month and which we're doing animals and flowers. Technically, this is a bug but it's an animal. Um, it's got flowers and it's a living being. Uh, so the first one we did was on Patreon. So two are gonna be on Patreon and two are gonna be live here on YouTube. This was the first one we did. And can I just say how cute he is? I love him and he's mine. 
I don't know if I'm going to sell him because <laughs> I plan to do the series of four um, and I think I just might keep all four of them and as a set because why not? Um, but anyways, this was our first one and I'm really proud of how it came out. Um, if you would like access to that class, it is available uh, to magenta tier patrons and above. Um, and with that in mind, if you become a magenta tier uh, patron, you'll have access to literally every class that I've ever done on Patreon. So it's a super good deal. Um, and it supports me as an artist, which is nice. Um, and then speaking of Patreon, for my last two tiers, my teal and my cobalt patron, I do um, postcards and I finally got uh, my printer working. So that is going to be going out to my those patrons uh, probably tomorrow. So I apologize for the delay on that. My, my printer was not, um, my printer and my computer <laughs> are kind of bugging out right now, but it's okay. I'll figure it out. Um, any questions before we get started painting either about Patreon or YouTube or, um, supplies? Um, it is a wonderful class. Even mine turned out cute. <laughs> yes, it did. I liked how yours did. Um, it's like, honestly, it's so fun to see everybody's renditions. It's literally one of my favorite parts of being a teacher is being able to create something and then having other people create that same thing and how different they are. Cause you're all watching the same thing, but they all come out so different. It's so fun. Um, yeah. On that note, if you want to become a part of my Facebook community where you get to share that, um, and share all of your work with everyone, um, please go to my Facebook. I have a Facebook page for that. Here, let me copy, uh, let me copy the link for that. Um, it is a Facebook group. Um, and it also has all, all of the classes I've ever done, either YouTube or Patreon. You can just look in the albums um, and you can see you can see all the classes and um, you can see whether or not it, it some of them have like patreon next to it so you'll know it's a patreon class um, but you can you can skim through that and um, find classes so there's the link to that um, listen. hi Lynn good to have you here Allison I redid the grass and dandelions it looks way better yay you'll have to repost that Allison um, so we can see it because I would love to see um, how it turned out. Um, okay, I think that's all the announcements. Uh, sorry, there was a lot, it was a lot uh, of Patreon stuff, a lot of Patreon content. Um, so I apologize for that <laughs> for everyone who's not part of Patreon. Um, but my Patreon exists and it's a part of my classes. So um, yeah, let's get started. Um, all right, we are going to start with the background. If you have not um, done a preliminary sketch of your um, of your butterfly, that is okay. You can sketch it after we do the background. You don't have to do it first, but doing it beforehand will give you a little bit of a heads up of where everything's going to be, um, and you can change it before you start painting. So that is a nice. Um, that's a nice catch. Um, I'm going to get um, a little bit of black and go over just simply the outline of my butterfly. Uh, again, if you are painting it in after you do the background, then you don't, you can just wait for five minutes while we do this. Um, but for everyone who did the outline and you don't want to lose that outline, um, I'm only going to be doing this for the butterfly because the flower is a little bit more of it's a little bit more organic and flowers are all different shapes and sizes and if it's in the wind and whatever um, I'm not worried about that but when it comes to the butterfly a butterfly is not square it is a specific shape um, so I'm gonna take a liner brush if you don't have a liner brush you can just grab any smallish um, any smallish uh, round brush um, if you don't want to do this and you'd rather draw it, you can also get a, like an acrylic pen. So I have on my, um, 
on my Amazon. I believe I put those on there. I have a bunch of these. Um, I've used them in past Patreon classes. They're super helpful. I actually do my signature um, in a white one. That's probably why it's so clear. They're super helpful. Um, I like having them. Um, when I first got them, I didn't know what I was going to use them for. Um, because my husband had bought them for like a art project for my kids and then we just had them so I was like well I might as well use them but I was like what am I going to use them for um anyways sorry I'm talking a lot anyways if you have one of those those are super helpful um and you won't have to worry about getting a fine liner or whatever um so I'm just going to grab my black and lots of water um a good amount of water will help this process go really quickly um, so I'm just gonna mainly do the outside and by having a good amount of water it will help the paint just move on the canvas and I'm pretty much going in with every stroke like I'm just going back into that paint and it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just getting the base outline of this butterfly. And this is so that when I do go over, when I do go over it with the background colors, I'll be able to see at least the outline of, um, of the butterfly. And for me, it's just helpful it's just helpful and I'm going to do the body and then a little bit of the head I don't feel like I need to do the you can do those if you want I don't feel like I need to do them though I almost want to take those off because the only part that's actually black is the end part so what I did is I got a clean brush and I just dipped it in some water and I'm just kind of brushing it off kind of erasing it um okay let me do let me do some of the legs and We have a leg here, a leg here, and a leg here. I think I only see three legs. And then there is like the little, I don't know what it's called, the thing that, their mouth essentially. Kind of actually it's shaped a little bit differently than it so like I said this is a really cool stage that you get to like redo <laughs> so for instance I just drew that and I was like ah, I don't like that <laughs> so I just kind of erased it with water I feel like this for some reason I didn't draw this on my um, I think it's on my thing. I just didn't transfer it over. Yeah, it is. Okay. What did you say, Lynn? Uh, proboscis. Proboscis. I'm probably butchering that. But, okay. That's what it's called. Okay. Um, so everything else is really, you can do it or not. It's up to you. But let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and do our background color. Now, something to know about this is that the background color is almost the same color as the um, as the butterfly itself. Make sure that when you're 
when you're doing the background color that it's on the lighter side so that when we go in to do our butterfly, there's some sort of contrast. Um, if there's not a lot of contrast, it'll get lost. Um, and the butterfly is a little bit darker in comparison to its surroundings. So that's what kind of pops it out. You could also go a little bit further and just make it a little bit even lighter. Um, I mean the, the background even lighter. So it's up to you how you want to do that. Just know that if there's not a whole lot of contrast between the background um, and the um, and the butterfly, it might get lost. In the same way, if there's too much purple in the background, the flower will get lost. So, tread lightly. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so I will probably keep most of my purples in the background. Um, like not in the area that the purple is. Um, you can see like right here in the picture, there's purple in the background. So the it kind of gets lost a little bit where the outline of the um, outline of the flower is. So when we're doing this, try to just keep your composition in mind when you're doing this, okay? Which is another reason why it's helpful to do this kind of outlining beforehand so you know where everything is. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and make our background color. It consists of our black, our raw umber. I'm gonna get out my raw umber. And I'm going to get out a lot of white. A lot of white. Most of this background color is going to be your white, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna start with that. There's a lot of white there, but most of the background is going to be this color, and there is a lot of background to cover. So I'm gonna start with that, and then I will slowly add in my other colors. The other thing you're going to want to do is to get out some green and some purple. So I'm gonna start off with my, here, let's do, let's do the background color first um, and then we'll mix our purple and our green. So I have this white, it's a good amount of white here. I'm going to, ver like there's not much brown on that. Brown will taint it quite a bit. Um, so I'm going to do brown and just a tiny bit of black um, because I want it to gray out just a tiny bit. So I'm just going to mix that in. It's going to be this kind of grayish, brownish white, brownish gray, I guess I should say. And I think I almost want to have two tones. You see how the background kind of goes in and out of like darkers and lighters? Maybe this is the lighter kind and I'm going to make a slightly darker um, which means I need to use even less than I did before because I have less white now that I'm working with. I would rather the background be too light than too dark because remember that our, our butterfly is roughly the same color. Um, colors, I should say. Okay, um, I'm going to do that and I'm going to make one more darker component just for variety. Not, not very much, but I at least have that option if I want to go slightly darker. So I have three gradients. You probably can't see, yeah, you can kind of see it. So this is my lighter. It's almost white, but it's a little bit off-white. I have a, like a shade darker and then another shade darker. I think I'm going to go a tad bit darker on this one. I 
So now I have roughly three shades of the background that I can kind of just like play with. This bug has a death wish. It's going to get trapped in paint. I just know it. Hopefully not on my canvas. <laughs> okay. So there are my three background colors. Um, and in the background, there are a few other colors. I'm going to make this green. It's a fairly darker green than what's here. Um, just because it's kind of blurred out. It's a bit darker. So I'm going to grab some of this green. I'm going to grab some brown. And see what that comes to. And remember that when we mix it into our background, it will lighten up a little bit mixing into the, the background color. So just keep that in mind. So I'm going, I'm going fairly dark. It's a little bit off, off screen. Let's see if I can move this. There we go. Now you can see better. So I have my dark, my dark green, which is just this super bright green and brown. I didn't add any black to it. Um, although maybe it might not, I don't probably fine. Uh, and then other colors I see are going to be this purple. Now I'm not going to make a whole lot right now, um, because I don't want it to dry out by the time I get to the actual, um, to the actual flower. So I'm just going to. I'm just going to mix a tiny bit. Um, so I have this dark violet color. I'm going to add just a little bit of white and see what color it goes to. It's pretty medium purple. I do think it's the right, sh like the right color. Like I, it's got enough blue in it that it's not like pink. I think it's the right shade, it just needs to be lighter. Because this one, the one I have, you can see that it's a bit pinker in comparison, which is why I wasn't sure if I was going to use it. And obviously, if that's what you have and you want to use it, and it's too pink it's not too pink it's just not what the picture is but if you don't care about going picture perfect then that's it's your painting you can do whatever color tone you want <laughs> all right so that is that is pretty good I might add a little bit more white to it just because again for that contrast I, I'm gonna want of like kind of like the darker purple to be in front which is going to be that large flower and the large flower will have both darker and lighter hues in it um, okay so in summary we have our three background colors our three grays we have a light a medium and a slightly darker color we have, um, which is just white, black, and brown, uh, raw umber. We have our green, which is our raw umber and our bright green. And then we have uh, our dark violet color with white. So those are our background colors. Again, if you have a sponge that you would like to use, feel free to get that out. If not, I will show everyone who, everyone who doesn't have that. Um, I'll show you a way to kind of add those colors. Um, I'm going to start, let's see, I'm going to start over here on this side and work my way around and we'll get to kind of start a little bit of that differentiating colors um, over here and we'll kind of work our way and get better as we go. Um, so let's start. I'm going to start by just doing the whole top because I will forget 
if I don't. Also going to do this side. All right, so I did the pot. Uh, the top and side. I'm going to start in the corner and start with my medium color. And then kind of as I move in, I can go maybe a little darker over here. go back into my lighter, come into my light lighter version, like my whiter. And you'll see that I can still see, even though I've gone over it with that background color, um, I'm able to see it. You can see slightly the different shades. And I'm just kind of going in a figure eight, going back and forth, uh, blending it all in. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this green and put that in. If you have a sponge, you can, this is the point where you can blend it out. Um, and if not, if you don't have it, then you can do it with your brush by just going in little, little tiny, tiny circles. And I'll grab, I'll show you here with the purple. I grabbed a tiny bit of purple. And I'm going to brush off my, my, my brush. And I'm just doing tiny little circles until it's kind of blended in a bit. And it looks out of focus because it's supposed to look out of focus. And so that's, that's flower one. Um, you can also if you have this you can start putting in little uh, little bits and pieces in the background of just like hints of color here and there um, after you've put in the, the base Got some darker colors going on here. I'm gonna try to stay on the lighter side when it comes to right by the um, right by the butterfly, so that when we do go in with those darker colors, there's a little bit more of a contrast. So I'm actually going to lighten up this section right here, and we have another opportunity to do the greenery. So I'm just gonna put in a 
this green. And then I'm just going to take my sponge. And barely tap it and we'll just kind of blend out. I think I'm going to get some of my yellow and blend it with, um, mix it with a tiny bit of green so that I can have more of that nature green color. Just blend a little bit of this darker color in. So I have yellow, my lighter green, and then I blended just a little bit of the darker green, which is essentially just a tiny bit of that brown. Just so we can have a little bit of a brighter green there. Take a little bit of this and put it up here. Alright, I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to rinse out my brush because now I have some green in it. And I don't really want green in it anymore. It's pretty light over here, so I'm just going to grab a bunch of my light gray. Make sure I blend it in. Over here I can start putting that darker color on. Blend that in. For beginners, I would highly recommend um, blending wet on wet because it's a lot easier than blending on dry. Not to say that you can't do it, it's just not as easy. Alright, so when you come up here I'm just going to flick my brush in I don't need to go over the entire flower because um, a lot of that's going to be that purple color and if you want to go over your if you put in your stem and you want to go over it you can you can always put it in later But if you're not comfortable doing that, then obviously. Um, okay, so before I move on to the other side, I'm going to come in and grab some... Let's see, I'm going to do the green first. You can put... Now this is where you get to decide, um, like, what... If you want to do um, your blending with the brush or with the or blending with um, the sponge. So I'm just kind of blending everything out. I'm going to add some other colors in here like this purple. Add 
add some purple down here. Maybe some white. And then you can blend that. I'm going to come back in with some white. Maybe to lighten up the blend. Come in with some more purple. If you're using the sponge, this is a pretty easy technique because you put it on there and then you just come in and you do some gentle tapping. And you're able to blend it out. And the more you go over it, the more it's going to blend. So depending on how blurred out you want to get. Um, and here's an example of if I'm trying to do this via, um, via just brush. I'm going to rinse out my brush. Um, my sponge is dry. I'm just going to blend this in so I can get a little bit of purple and I can move my brush kind of up and down. And blend it that way if I don't have a brush. Or if I don't have a, um, oh, I forgot to blend this out. Doink. Okay, so if that happens, I completely forgot to blend that out. I'm just going to come back in with the, uh, the base color and go over that. And stamp it in. Maybe we'll come back over it with some darker color and stamp that in. Um, do be mindful of your um, where the different colors are on your um, your sponge. Like I have my purples and whites here, and then I have my greens on the other side. Uh, so just try to keep tabs on that. Start stamping. Alright, so there are a couple of these that um, they look like stems in the background. So I'm just going to gently put this in here, kind of stamp over it, and I'm going to come back with my sponge. and stamp over it a little bit, kind of blend it out. If you don't have one, you can rinse out your brush, try to dry it off a little bit, and you can kind of um, 
um, you can blend it out that way. Or just with a dry brush, you can always wait for everything to dry and come back with a dry brush. So there is going to be a point though, see I came on with some water and um, now that water, the sponge is taking it off. So now I have to wait until this dries in order to dry brush anything back on because it started to dry on me. So if that happens, don't try to fix it, just stop. Um, you, can, you can come back to it when it's a little bit drier or when it is dry and you can play with dry brushing which I might do anyways so let's go ahead and do our top part um, I'm just gonna go in with this white or like the the lightest gray that I have Again, I'm just going to kind of flick into where I know the um, where I know the the flower is. And I'm going to show you um, a version of blending without the brush. I have purple. I just did this. I have purple on my brush. And I'm just going to, in little bits at a time, add some purple on here and go like against it. Here, I can even put another one over here. And I'm just blending it. It's really, really easy um, when it's wet. Once it starts drying, it becomes a lot harder to blend as you can as you can tell here. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of some greenery over here. And I have like, I have barely any greenery, like green on my brush. But because this is still wet, It's just blending in. And I want that to blend out a little bit more, so I'm just going to brush over it. I kind of want to blend out a little bit.
Now, as you can see, I'm just wiggling my brush with barely anything on it, and it's blending it out. Um, now, I'm going to give you um, an example of doing a dry brush. I don't think I'm going to do any um, any for me, but I'm going to show you. So I have this, um, I have this, I'm going to clean out my brush, dab it off, make sure that most of the color and the water is out. I'm going to get just a little bit of uh, purple. I have barely anything on my brush and I'm just going to just add a tiny bit more color to this one over here. Maybe that one's a little bit closer than in the original picture so you can see a little bit more detail um, or you can add more over here let's see where else could I put it I could put a little bit over here There you go. Um, so obviously there's there's ways to do it um, either with or without a sponge. Um, if you did use a sponge, however, you're gonna wanna um, rinse this out as soon as possible. Um, so I'm gonna take two minutes to go uh, wash it out with soap and water and squeeze it out. Um, and I will be right back. I have to let the background dry anyway, so I'll be right back. All right, hello, I am back. Sorry for anyone that uh, dropped by uh, and saw an empty chair. <laughs> um, I just went and washed my, my sponge and that is setting aside. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, we're working from back to front, which means we're going to do our um, this little guy, our stem, and then our flower, and then our um, butterfly. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to grab my filbert, just my small filbert, and I'm going to mix my dark green with a little bit of this lighter green, this kind of yellowy green, to get a little bit of a 
just like a neutral I feel like and then I can add my highlights and lowlights grab a tiny bit of water not too much because I don't want it to become translucent and I'm just going to put this in Now I'm holding my finger here, or my hand here, so I can rest this, so I can use my whole elbow, my whole range of motion, it's almost like a pivot, so that I can get this kind of round motion, and I can have a little bit better of control. And there is a slight piece of grass that's coming out. You don't have to add this. But it'll help me. the shape of this all right so I'm going to continue this off the page So I'm going to grab just a little bit of this darker green and put it underneath. And then grab some of this middle green and mix it just a tiny bit with some white and add it on top.
to make sure this goes all the way into the flower because there's some pieces that are um, uh, all right let's go ahead and do the um, the flower I'm gonna do a very light uh, purple so I'm gonna grab the background color and add the lightest background color and add a little bit of this purple to it and I'm going to just kind of fill this area with it almost like the um like the flower like behind itself Is what I would call the undercoat and the ugly coat <laughs> the ugly stage um, I'm gonna take this green this dark green with my liner brush or if you have another smaller brush and I'm going to brush out from the center some of these will a lot of these will probably be hidden but we know that they're there. Um, now I'm going to make a slightly darker purple. So I'm gonna grab my violet and that is a lot of purple. So I'm gonna put some of that back. <laughs> um, Cause I had like the tiniest bit that made this um, before and I I'm not even going to need that much. So, we'll leave it there. Alright, and I'm going to use some of this white just to make a darker shade. That we can use. Okay. Um, I'm really happy with this because we're an hour in and the flower's not going to take too much time and then we can work the rest of the time on the detail of the butterfly which makes me happy. Um, okay, I'm going to use my small filbert because it's round at the top so it'll make it a lot really easy to do this. I'm going to grab some of this, I'm going to say lavender and purple. Does that make sense? So the lavender is the lighter color and the purple is going to be the darker color. So I have my lavender and I'm just going to come out here and pull in and I'm, maybe I'll get some lavender and then dip it in the purple and we're just going to, I'm pretty much doing just doing the outside. I'm just going to grab some of these and okay so this part is darker in the middle 
this part's kind of darker as you get to that section and then there's a lighter piece over it and you can also get some lighter and then dip it into the white um, and start kind of dabbing your brush we can always kind of edit it later But I'm just going to, I just want to, at this point, I just want to get some of this color on here. You can dab or you can pull in the different directions. It's going to be lighter up, um, up where there's a little bit more light and then it's going to start to getting darker and more shadowy um, down below. Now I'm going to take some white and lighten up some of these edges that are in the sun. And you can add a couple of really dark purple spots on like the tips of some of these. I think I'm going to come back in with that green because I think I covered up too much. Covered up too many. Um, part of this is to have contrast within the um, within the flower and if you don't have contrast then it's just gonna look like a blob so try to add your your highlights and your lowlights in there and at first I'm kind of just putting it anywhere but then as the flower starts to take shape I'm being a little bit more intentional um, and once you start putting in the flower try not to look at the f at the reference too much um, because your flower is gonna look a little bit different and that's okay try to start visualizing what your flower looks like 
and where the petals are so that you can shape your flower and not the flower that is on the reference. By all means, you can use it as a reference, but there is at some point where you need to stop looking at it because it's not going to be perfect and your petals are going to be in different places than, um, than the flower that you're seeing. I hope that makes sense. I do want to make my flower a little bit bigger, so I'm going to attempt to bring it up more. So I'm just going to put a little bit more of this base color down. And I'm going to bring this one out a little bit. Yeah, at some point you have to stop looking at the reference and really focus on what you've painted. Because um, even, even me as an artist, um, and I would say that I'm fairly good at copying things, mine, even mine looks different, you know? Um, so it's, yeah, it's important that you, once you get to a point where you can start seeing your own flower develop, you gotta start looking at your own and less on the reference. So right now I'm just putting in some darks um, over here to give a little bit of contrast and blending it out with my finger. Super professional. I think I think I like I think I like mine 
enough to move on. I can always come and fix things if I feel like it's necessary once I do the rest of it. Um, but I like it. I think I might actually, before I move on, um, just looking at the colors, there is a little bit of pink um, in some of the lighter tones. So I'm going to get out my lavender, my purple, which has a little bit of that pinker tone. You can even tell it's slightly pinker. Um, so I'm going to see what this does. And I'm just going to add some of this pinker tone in here. Just where some of the neutral pink colors are, or ne the neutral purple colors are. I'm adding just a little bit of that. I approve. Can't see a whole lot of difference on the camera, um, but I can see in person. It's enough of a difference that I like it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let we have about forty-five minutes to finish the butterfly. So let's go ahead and get on our main uh, our main color. There's a lot of white in here. And the first thing I'm going to do while I get these colors up and running is I'm going to. put some black in these areas just so that I don't lose them and this will be dry by the time we get to it so at least it should be Just putting on some darker, probably getting carried away. I'm just trying to get the black off my, uh, the black off my brush. Okay, so now that that's kind of done, I'm going to, um, I'm going to draw in. I didn't draw in all the little details because um, I didn't really feel like it was necessary at the time. I kind of wish I did, but um, knowing that, I'm going to use um, this main color, the lighter color of background, and put it in all the lighter spots. And this can be a fairly um, light coat. It doesn't have to be super heavy. going to come in with a darker tone just on the very bottom and blend that in
If you're not good with um, extra lines and all the lines of the butterfly, um, I would say to line those in with black before you start so that you have all those like kind of pre-done um, so you don't have to worry about trying to figure out where they all are or whatever um, the case that that is. So I have our first coat on that. I'm going to go ahead and put um, a coat on the body. going to so the first thing um, since I didn't draw them in um, the first thing that I will need to do is figure out all where all these lines are because that's going to determine um, where all these extra like dots and things are so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get um, almost like a yellowish brown so I can draw this in so I'm gonna get some yellow I have some brown already on here I'm going to grab some of this and I'm just going to very very lightly maybe I'll even add some white to it and some water with my liner brush. Again, you can use a smaller brush or a just a small brush if you want to. Um, there's a line in between these two. It's kind of like a loop. Um, and obviously this can change from butterfly to butterfly. So if it's not exactly like this one, that's okay. This one goes around here. Um, use the circles that we already created for reference on where these lines are. So I'm looking at those first and where they um, where they connect to them. So for instance, these two lines, oops, these two, uh, sorry, these two dots, there's one that comes up and kind of like connects to that. First there's a um, 
let's see, this one, there's a line that comes right off of that one. And this one, it's like a circle here. And even mine probably won't be exactly the same, that's okay. That's roughly, that's roughly what it looks like. I'm going to grab some white with my filbert brush and I'm just going to dry brush on some lighter colors in between here. kind of put in some of these lighter colors Right, then I can come in with this darker color and put in any darker colors that I want. And do note that this is still this is still kind of like the ugly stage a little bit. Just dabbing. I note that some of these are a little bit in this like, um, like rainbow like it goes over like it bridges each each one of these each one of these bridges um 
into the next one, so just keep that in mind. I'm just going to take white and go over that black line on the edge. And try to really look at the underlying color because we're going to come back over with like black dots. That will ultimately tint uh, the butterfly. And honestly, I think we're actually ready for that. Just um, putting in the darkness of this so I can come back with the light. And while I'm over here, I'm going to grab some of this black. And darken up its body. And if you need to use a smaller brush for this, you can. I think I might switch to a smaller brush too. Add a couple lines here. And then maybe brush that in a little bit, give it some texture. And we'll add we'll add some kind of furry textures in a bit. Um, first, I want to start getting out our. Um, start doing our circles. So, um, let's see. I'm going to add any gray spots that aren't, um, that aren't really speckled. Like under here, it's not really, it's not really speckled, it's just gray. I'm going to do that. And around here, different areas. Alright, I'm going to put in all my black ones. my plain kind of black ones and they are not perfectly circles like they do not need to be perfectly round and even the edges don't need to be um, they don't need to be, like, uh, straight.
So I'm just going to put it anywhere where there's like a bit more black than I want to add with dots. And then there's also like black circles around these red ones. So I'm just going to do that now. I just have a dry brush that I'm using. So what I mean by dry brush is like, you'll notice when I'm doing this, it's like all the times that you like want this or that you like don't want it, like you're trying to get a smooth line and this is what you're painting. <laughs> it's usually not what you want, but I'm actually using the texture of the canvas to my advantage. Alright, so it's at this point when I'm going to get a, uh, before I do that, I'm going to make sure that any, any, uh, light spots that are, that like the sun are hitting on the wings are pure white. So that includes, um, that includes like this one right here, there's like, some white oops I had gray on my on my brush I'm just gonna get a new brush um, you're gonna want that to be fairly white before you do this next step And there's a couple spots down here on the right side. Down here. And then on the outer edge, <coughs> excuse me, there's like a couple pieces in here that are catching the light. I'm just going to take this all the way edge down.
All right, I'm gonna start putting in my um, my dots. So I have this that I'm going to be doing my dots with. It's a just an old brush, and I can get it pretty separated. And I can just start adding this in places. And for the high volume areas, you're just going to be putting a lot of it. So I'm getting some paint and then I'm just going back and forth, making sure that it's on there evenly. And then you're just going to continue, oh, I forgot to do a round one here. Um, and you don't have to use the entire brush. You can put it at an angle and only use the tip of it. going to add it everywhere. I think what I'm also going to do is I'm going to get um, a toothbrush and just do a little bit of splattering, very controlled splattering because I don't want to get it on the rest of um, 
I don't want to get it on the rest of the painting. And if you do get it on the rest of the painting, you can come by with a clean brush and rub it out. You just have to do it quick. Um, it does help to have just a tiny bit of water in your black. To help it um, have the right consistency. I'm just going to follow this down all the way. And then what I'm going to do is there is kind of a black outline. Um, I'm going to stamp with a filbert brush all the way around each, um, I'm going to stamp all the way around each wing.
And now I'm going to get my red out. And get a. I'm going to get some white and do the inner circle part first. In the inner circle part, I'm just going to mix um, white with like a tiny bit of red. Might even need a little bit more white than that. It's a very, 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 very light red. I'm just going to put that in the middle of all of these sections. And then I'm going to mix a little bit of red with some orange, or sorry, with some yellow. And I'm going to add a little bit of brown to it just to darken it up ever so, just a little bit. It's a little bit too dark for me, or too light. All right, I'm gonna use that color for around here. I think that's a perfect color, but the color around up there needs to be a little bit brighter. Like more yellowish. A bit more of an orangey color. Let's see, I'm going to grab some of this lighter color, add it in there. It's a little bit more broken up than what I did.
I'm going to go in with just a little bit of white. Just to kind of reshape some of this. Alright, I love how that came out. So now we just have to kind of finish up details of our butterfly body and then we'll be all done, um, which isn't going to take too long. Um, I'm going to do a dark gray um, antenna. Uh, the little black dots, the little tiny ones, I used a... Um, as purple all over it now, but I used just an old brush um, and I dabbed it. You have to dab it to separate it um, and then you get black and a little bit of water and then you just dab a whole bunch of times. I did use um, a toothbrush for a little bit of splattering here and there um, just to give a little bit more randomness, but um, you could do a bristle brush. Ah, no, it's just a, it's a, it's a wash. It's a snap, uh, Princeton snap wash brush. Um, it's just old and frayed. Uh, you could, you might be able to use like a, a fan brush if you wanted to. I just know that this one specifically, I remember using it on my last butterfly and it came out really well. So I, and it's even older now. So I know, I knew that it was going to work. So I didn't, I didn't try and do a different brush. Um, but if you have like a fan brush, that might work well as well. So, um, it's really whatever, whatever you need, whatever you, whatever you want to do. All right. I just put in two antennas with the... Uh, dark background gray. I'm going to come in with some white and go over the back one on the top of it and then I'm going to add black black tip and start small you can start small and then you can always go bigger it's a lot easier to make it bigger than it is to make it smaller or erase it
going to start to put on these different layers. Um, there's kind of, there's like a black, the black eye is in here somewhere, so I'm just going to put that in there. I would get some white to put some fur, some white fur. I don't really know if it's called fur, but it's fuzz. On the different parts. And then you can always come back in with a little bit of your darker colors. And I'm just going to darken right where the um, wings come in. Can always come back and give a little bit of highlight to it. Give some detail. And depending on how realistic you want to go, you can actually put more like fur-like textures if you wanted to, but it is all up to you. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of this darkerness by the eye. A little bit of contrast, and then and then I'm going to do the I'm going to do the legs in uh kind of like a blackish brown just mixing black and brown together and then I'll come back over it with some white And then this little thing is a little bit smaller than the legs. I'm going to add some light brown to the front leg, the one that's like on the top. This is just my brown and my white. Just trying to lighten it up a little bit. And 
And now I'm going to come in with my um, my white. Make sure you have a good amount of water so that it goes on the canvas easy. And I'm just going to put it on here. And it really brings the legs and everything to life. Giving that a um, little bit of highlight. And something that I've no that I noticed is that my light, my background, uh, my background right here was a little bit too light, so I wasn't seeing the white highlights. So just right around this area, I darkened it just a tad bit and I faded it out. So now when I go back in with just my pure white and add some of this detail, this is the last little bit. Add some of this like, like detail um, now you can actually see it because before you couldn't like you couldn't see there wasn't enough contrast um, with the with the background but yeah um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to add. I think less is more when it comes to blurry backgrounds. Um, so for instance, when I did, uh, when I did, wait, where am I? Uh, that one. When I did that one last year. Um, we tried to give a little bit more, obviously we were going based off of the picture, and things were a little bit closer and so you could see them a little bit more but they were still blurry I think in terms of blurry backgrounds less is more so more blurry and less um, like less realistic when it comes to like what you actually see because this gives just enough like you know it's a flower field you know the, those you know the blurry things in the background are flowers it gives it enough like you know what it is but I don't need the shape of a blurry flower to know that it's a flower in the background just like dusts of color is enough for our brain to understand that the flowers in the background um so i think what i've learned in terms of like this one compared to the one i i did last year is that less is more when it comes to blurry backgrounds because now we get to focus on the butterfly and the flower that we want to focus on rather than um rather than the background and what's in the background like our focus is truly on um the butterfly so 
um, yeah, I had a lot of fun. This was a lot of fun. Um, I'm excited for the next two. The next one is going to be a chipmunk in Patreon. And then after that, we have our owl, which is a live class. So uh, super excited for that. Um, thank you so much for joining me. And I look forward to our next painting together. Talk to you guys soon. Have a great rest of your night. Bye.